Hey everyone, in today's Call of Duty DMZ video, I've got a complete guide to the new point of interest, Building 21, including everything you need to know on how to solo this very challenging area as well. Now, if you haven't heard, Building 21 is a new separate location from Almazra and does require an access key card to enter. I've already put together a guide on how to farm for these key cards, and I'll have a link in the description below if you need to peek at that as well. In this guide, I'll be covering every aspect of Building 21. Solid loadouts, how to do the weapons case, the colored lock doors, the timed lock doors, audio cues, spawns, bosses, evacing, literally everything. So I'll have timestamps in the description below if you want to skip around. So why would you want to solo Building 21? Well, right now it's the true ultimate test for your skills. And with that comes some seriously ramped intensity, and I really, really love that intensity. I will say though that I would not start going in solo until you know the map in its entirety, like the back of your hand, like every little detail of how the map functions. For this reason, I'm going to go over every little detail that there is and to make you the best player that you can be in Building 21 for solos and for squad play. So the first and most important thing when running Building 21, like I said, is map knowledge. And this is going to take some time for you to memorize because it literally feels like a maze the first few times you play it. Now there are some good maps out there. I found this one on Reddit, really big fan of this map. We'll take a look at this together and kind of go over every little detail of this. Now the Building 21 is three floors. You've got floor one, which is actually the bottom, not at the top. So three is the top, two is the middle, one is the garage. So I think the best way to start really getting comfortable with a map is creating like an anchor point for your mind. So the anchor point for me was the garage and the two spawns on the west side. There's two spawns. Actually, this map is only showing one spawn there, but there actually is two, one in the other hallway as well. And I always use that as my like my reference point. And I started to learn exactly where everything was based on that. Some people might want to use server room and we're going to go over the server room in a second, but pick a focal point, a thing that you can recognize on each floor to instantly identify where you are. Now, there is obviously a very, very important feature of this map, and that is four stairwells, one in each corner. You've got stairwell A, B, C, and D. These are going to be hugely helpful for you to also maintain that anchor point in your mind as you're traversing the map. Now, all players are going to spawn on either floor one or floor two. There's no spawning on floor three. In fact, floor three is locked until 11 minutes into the raid. And we'll get into like the timing of the entire raid here in a little bit, but no spawns on the third floor, all spawns on two or on one. And a lot of these spawns are pretty close to each other. Now there are four teams of three players, a total of 12 or nine enemies for you to kill before you have total control of the entire map, which is not a lot actually, especially considering how strong the AI is on this map. Teams are dying to AI, teams are dying to each other, and you know, halfway through the timer of the map, you know, the entire area could be wiped out but knowing all these spawns is really important because a lot of them are really close to each other i mean just a few turns and if one team decides to sprint one way or another you could run right into another team so know these spawns going to help you in the long run for sure and this is all about map knowledge knowing the spawns knowing all the rooms knowing where the colored doors are knowing where the locked doors are how to get up to three and we're going to go over everything but keep this map on another monitor or on your freaking phone or whatever and have it by your side because in the very 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 beginning like i said earlier this whole place does feel like a maze all right let's dive into the colored locked doors so these key cards the green key card the blue key card the red key card and the black key card all are one use keys and they can be used to open these areas on the map and they have pretty much all the identical style of loot in them there's three orange crates in all of them and they all have some loose loot that can be like a rare loot spawn like a golden skull or a gold bar or a self res or a huge stack of cash and three main golden crates now the black key card is only found off of the boss inside of building 21 so there's two different types of bosses there's the wheelson and he is a robot drone that grows around the top floor and counterclockwise over and over again and just has a crazy beam like accuracy on you when you're anywhere near him and he can shoot from from the third floor down to the second floor through the glass so something to always keep keep in mind but he drops a black key card when you take that down or the valken which is also a boss that has a grenade launcher and he has a ton of health and you can just beam him down with a lot of clips and semtexes or you can assassinate him but both of those bosses that live inside of building 21 are the only place where you can get the black key card 
Now the green key card can also only be found in building 21, at least as of now. And it can be seen every single time you open up the armory inside the safe, which is where the weapons case is. You'll always have a green key card in there. And you can also just be found off AI also. The blue key card and the red key card, again, can also be found in building 21, but can be found in Al Masra as well. And like I said, I'll have a link in the description below on how to farm for the red and the blue key card, as well as the building 21 access card. Now, the colored doors are not the only doors that are locked in building 21. There are multiple doors that are also locked that are time locked and they open at 11 minutes on the clock. Once the raid hits 11 minutes, all these doors unlock. And that includes the generator room, the archive room, the side lab, and the core lab, as well as the third floor access at D3, C3, and B3, but not A3. And this is important to keep in mind, a3 is inaccessible and that is by design because it is literally right next to the armory room so they don't want players to be able to access it super super fast after doing the first step in the weapons case event okay so while we're on the subject let's talk about how to do the weapons case so the weapons case you're going to go into the garage and you're going to go all the way to the east side in between a and b and there's a huge server room it's lit up red it's pretty dark in there you're going to go in there clear out all the ai there's a very specific server that you look at it and you have the prompt to hack the server. Now this server can only be hacked at the 11 minute mark as well. Just like all the other locked doors, this server abides by that same rule. So if you get there too early, you will not be able to hack it until 11 minutes is on the clock on the raid. And when you click on this button, it is going to start like a meter. And that when that meter is completely full, the server is hacked and then we can go on to the next step. But there's a couple of things that you need to know. Number one, the moment you press the button to hack the server, there will be an elevator that opens with three AI to your east. So if you're doing this solo, for example, you just click the button, let go, run right to the freaking elevator and throw some Semtex and beam these guys down and then come back to the server and finish completing the hack. Now, while you're holding down the button to hack this server, you can do pretty much everything else. You can crouch prone, you can reload, you can shoot, you can ADS, you can play, you can do everything you normally can just do not let go of the button for your interact while the server is being hacked because then you will have to redo it again if you let go now once that is done you want to get up to the armory and the armory is on the top floor just outside of a3 but like i said earlier you can't access a3's door until the very very end of the raid so what we need to do is go out the server room and head south to the b stairwell we're going to go into b we're gonna go all the way upstairs. And now B3 will be accessible, just like C3 and D3, you can get into the top floor because you've obviously already passed the 11 minute mark. Now do keep in mind, you have to unlock the door so you can hold down the button to unlock the door. If you go up there and it just says open, that means someone else has already gone through that door or obviously if the door is open, there's another team on the third floor doing something, so be careful. But if you walk up to the door and it says unlock and you hold it down, that means you're the first person to travel through that door in the raid. Now once you've got open that door and you're on the top of B3, you're gonna wanna now head to the north and this is where you're going to have your first encounter with the Wilson, potentially. So the Wilson travels counterclockwise in a very perfect manner in this rectangle along the top hallway of the third floor. And sometimes when you open that door, depending on the timing of you getting up there, he could be to the left or he could be in front of you. So you want to make sure that he, if he's in front of you, you need to let him pass and continue along his way. And if you pass him on the left, just keep on running because we are going to head directly north all the way to the A3 corridor, which is where the armory is. But if you see the Wilson, you can run past him if he's on the left, but if he's in front of you, you're going to have to hold in the B3 stairwell before you can then ultimately go and run behind him. So once we go all the way down the hall to the north, and now we're at A3's door, the armor is literally just to the left. It will be open. There will be guys in there, typically uh, AI that you need to kill. And there's gonna be a safe and a bunch of orange, there's three orange crates and some three vesties. It's a good place to kit out. All the guns in these orange crates, I believe have five attachments. So they're pretty solid uh, for the most part. I think some of them have four. And then you also have the safe. So the safe is going to be here. You're gonna open the safe like you normally do in Almazra. It's gonna take about a minute or so. And inside will be the weapons case, a green key card, a gun, and some other loose loot. Now, one thing to keep in mind is there is no evac on this map until the seven minute mark. So if you were speedy and you got there quickly and there's eight minutes left, you might as well leave the weapons case inside of the safe because the moment you pick it up, just like in Almazra, 
you will be visible to every enemy team that's still alive on the map. So typically I like to leave the case in there until exactly at the seven minute mark then go back to it, grab it, and go right to the evac if that's what I'm looking to do. Now remember that A3 was locked from the inside so you couldn't access it from the stairwell. Well, you can unlock it from the armory side. So if the evac that you're trying to get to is below you or down in the garage, you can now unlock the door to A3 and go down that staircase um, when you otherwise wouldn't have been able to earlier. Now, once you get to your evac elevator, you're gonna have to click the button to open the doors. You have to wait some time on this. And then once you get back in, you have to click it again and continue to wait for the doors to close slowly, which is obviously a very nerve wracking scenario. Now, also, the doors will automatically close even if you don't go in to click the button. So clicking the button is one way to start the timer earlier, but the doors will automatically close on their own if enough time has elapsed after you press the button the first time. So this is now a good time to talk about just kind of like the, the way a timeline looks on Building 21's raid. So everyone starts at around 13 minutes, everyone spawns in. At 11 minutes, the timed locked doors open. At seven minutes, the first evac appears. And at four minutes, another evac appears. And then at zero minutes, the final evac will appear and the gas starts to come in at the zero mark. And you then have three minutes to get out. And also keep in mind that if an enemy team takes one of the evacs, it removes the evac as a possible evac for you. So you now have to rotate to a different evac. And this is a good segue into the audio cues. You're gonna get a lot of audio cues throughout your time in Building 21, specifically from a lady over a PA system that's gonna give us some really, really good information. So starting with the time-locked doors that get open, there are some areas in the game where they are locked and when a player team goes in there, you will get an alert. And that includes what we talked about earlier, the generator room, the archive room, the armory also, the side lab and the core lab. So anytime you hear the announcer say the side lab has been breached, then you know that there is someone on the third floor right next to the armory room. So every time a team is capturing one of these areas, there can be a safe in there and there's some good stuff for them to get, but it also gives away their position on the map. So know that before you start going into these rooms. There's also obviously an alert saying that, hey, we've hit the 11 minute mark and these doors are unlocking. There are alerts for enemy reinforcements. Enemy reinforcements are constantly coming into the area and they use the evac elevators to do so. So anywhere where you see an evac elevator or learn about these evac elevators, you're gonna learn where they all are as you, the more you play and they're gonna start spawning in new AI. And it's gonna be more and more difficult as the time goes on in the raid. Now the boss, the Velkin boss with the grenade launcher does have his own audio cue as well. He spawns in at 445. You can just lock that and Lock that every single time he is there at 445 but you also do get an alert just to help you remember that and lastly you're going to get an alert when enemy teams are using the elevator and evac and you're going to get the a first alert when they click on the button the first time and then when the doors start closing it'll say something like the enemy team is evacuating you'll also get a final one like enemy team escaped these audio cues i can't stress enough are so important to your general understanding of the map and how to play it specifically the ones where people are going into the locked rooms as well as the reinforcements the reinforcements in this game are ruthless especially when they come at you from behind and you weren't prepared for it an elevator opens three ai come out and boom you're in trouble so really really lock in these audio cues okay let's talk about the two bosses the wilson and the Velkin. so the the wilson like i said earlier he's top floor he's always up there he rotates all the way through the hallways in a perfect pattern every time and he has a minigun that hits you really really hard and he always is moving counterclockwise he can be destroyed so you can shoot him down you can riot shield protect the shots and then melee him when he's reloading that's really susceptible to getting shot in the back but it's possible i personally almost every single time just avoid him i literally just avoid him but you definitely can take him down and he definitely does drop the black key card as far as the other boss the velkin he's going to be a more of a roamer and he's going to come at you no matter where you're at on the top floor and he has a grenade launcher and the thing does concuss it doesn't do as much damage as you might think even after getting hit twice if you're full shield you're not going to be down but it is kind of like a concussion hit as well so it can kind of discombobulate you but you can also at least at the time of this recording you can assassinate him if you can get behind him and melee him or you can just beam him down you know he has about the same amount of health as the juggernaut in Almazra, so to give you some context on how much health you need to take out but he's really not as bad as it seems and he drops that grenade launcher that you can then extract with as well as a black key card also so a couple small things that i didn't mention yet number one there is four dead drops that exist on this map and all four of them 
them are on the bottom floor garage floor inside of each of the four stairwells so there's four there and if you're coming in here and you're trying to reduce your cooldown on your loadout guns you can just start quickly move stuff over to to there and there is a ton of good loot in this in this area i mean oh, there's like a 50 percent chance for an encrypted hard drive in any pc that you open for example you're just going to see a lot more high value loot that can then be dead dropped for cooldown reduction also there is a buy station in the courtyard which is somewhat in the center of the map but in between c and d on the second floor and honestly this area is rough there's always ai shooting you in the back every time you're using it the wilson can hit you from above as he's going around through the glass from floor three down to floor two you know typically unless it's an emergency i'm not really hitting that but you absolutely can um if you have enough support to get there and clear it so now let's talk about loadout to me, the Chimera is really, really strong in building 21. The Chimera is an assault rifle that is unlocked by getting two kills in 15 different multiplayer matches. It's super easy to unlock. And in the assault rifle class, it's 210 bullets. It's time to kill inside of 25 meters is really fast. It's just a really, really strong gun to use. I'll have a link in the description below for the Chimera build that I like to use. I think you can use a lot of different guns here. You can have a lot of success with the RPK for example, which is still a meta gun in Warzone and in DMZ. But I think one thing that remains the same on all of these guns that you're going to see a lot of common ground on is the SZ Hollow Therm Scope. This scope is really, really strong in Building 21 because of the darkness. It's going to highlight enemies, players, and AI alike, making target acquisitions so much smoother. And it's I can't stress to you enough how important it is to have that scope. It's not mandatory, but I highly recommend it. By If I remember correctly, you have to get the PDSW or the P90 to level 12 to unlock this scope for you in all weapons now every time i come into building 21 i'm really only really bringing one gun but you can bring in a riot shield if you want i know some people like to run the riot shield it definitely helps limit the amount of damage you're taking from behind from the ai um, so the riot shield is an option and of course it has value against the wheelson as well but typically i'm not bringing in a riot shield i am bringing in the chimera when i'm on my loadout gun as far as the rest of the stuff i personally run stims in the tactical slot i mean you're getting beamed by ai endlessly on this map and the stims can save your life on more more than one occasion i highly recommend stims personally now as far as the lethal goes i think the thermite and the drill charge probably do the best overall job on this map the thermites do a nice job in the elevators when you're trying to like push teams that are evacuating the thermite's going to stick better in the elevator the elevators right now at the time of this posting seem to be absorbing a lot of the damage and or completely negating it for example you could throw a semtex into an elevator where there's a three-man evacuating and it literally won't hit anyone even though clearly it would hit all three it's almost like the lethal sometimes go through anyway back to the point and that is that thermites do stick in there better and they do burn you while you're in there obviously molotovs will as well and the drill charges are solid you can't go wrong with them there's a lot of people kind of hiding behind walls in here and it's good against the ride shielders good solid use with the drill charges also now in the utility slot i typically run munitions every single time i know some people like to try mess with anti-armor rounds i don't really see a big difference in time to kill with anti-armor rounds like some people might think so I run munitions strictly for obviously the ammo, but the tacticals and the lethal re-up. I mean, having four stims that you're ready and four thermites is huge um, for your ability to kind of stay alive. And so I personally run munitions box 100% of the time. So if you're coming in with your kit, but you don't have your loadout gun, that probably means that you have no vest either. So first of all, obviously there's a lot of good solid guns on the ground that drop off the AI. And you can definitely make your way through this map with standard issue ai contraband but you do want to get a vest and if you don't have a key getting that vest can be a little bit more difficult but here's some tips number one there are two places on building 21 that have guaranteed two vest spawns one is in the garage inside of the maintenance room which is where two out of the three green doors are and in the cubicles which is just outside a2 and the cubicles typically have at least two two-tier vests and of course, you have a lot of duffel bags around. The loot is pretty amplified in this place. So the duffel bags, make sure you're hitting those duffel bags because there is a pretty solid chance of getting a, a vest in one of those as well. Now, we talked earlier about the, lot, the time locked areas like side lab and core lab and the generator and the archive. Those areas can have safes in them. It's not a guarantee every time. You can have a safe uh, in one of those. There's also a couple of boxes, but not typically orange like you see behind the colored locked doors. So... Those are options. These are places to kind of get your, your raid started if you're going in with a single vest and no gun. Now that pretty much covers everything. 
I mean, there is a lot of detail there. There's a lot of things that you absolutely need to know, especially if you're planning on going in solo, because with all that map knowledge and knowing all the audio cues, it helps you fight and combat enemy teams and AI simultaneously on a level that you just have to be at if you're gonna be successful soloing, but you're gonna die a lot. I mean, the AI is insane. Um, you're gonna get shot in the back a lot, you know, especially if you're going in with one vest, soloing can be very, very difficult. But it can be done. I mean, I've done this weapons case over 10 times solo. I've messed around so many times. It's fun to mess around solo. It's also just a good way to learn the map. You know, you're not held, being held back by anyone. You can just go do and test out anything that you want. I know for me, map knowledge was extremely important as a solo player, especially in those fights. You know, you get, you knock a guy, maybe you full kill him, and then you rotate. You know how to rotate through all these little nooks and crannies and areas. Sometimes I'll even take a stairwell up and go to the opposite stairwell, come down, and then shoot the team in the back while they're trying to res the guy that I shot in the front. And now they're still looking in that direction. I'm already behind them. You know what I mean? So learning how to rotate, and that really just comes with map knowledge. So that's it. I'll be really watching the comments. If you guys have any questions directly related to the area, I'll answer them the best I can. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I am here on YouTube seven days a week live. So if you're looking for more DMZ content, then make sure to drop a sub and I'll catch it in the next one.